Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the Conflict of Nick channel, I'm your host Nick. And today's video will be all about tips and tricks that I use and recommend to others. This video will consist of tips, recommendations, and important information that any player can use to enhance their con skills. Starting with our first tip, using the rush mechanic to take cities and provinces faster. This is something that I learned a long time ago and I've utilized a lot throughout my con career. It saves a lot of time, and I use it a lot. Simply put, when a land conquering unit such as infantry is close enough to the center of a city or province that you want to conquer, you can tap on the unit and toggle the rush command. If the unit is close enough to the center of the province, the unit will magically move to the center of the province at that exact moment and capture it, saving you a bit of time. Now since rushing makes your units lose HP over time, simply toggle the rush command again so that the unit will move at normal speed again. Easy. Now you know how to save time when capturing cities or provinces, and it can even change the tide of a battle if you get to the center before an enemy unit arrives. Moving to our second tip, using the patrol command instead of the attack command with aircraft. This is an easy one. Aircraft have two forms of engaging enemy units, patrolling and attacking. The attack command will lock your aircraft onto a single enemy unit stack and when the aircraft arrives, it will damage that unit stack specifically. The second command, patrolling, is a bit different. Selecting the patrol command will allow you to send your aircraft to a specific location within the range of the aircraft's flight capacity. This command can be used to scout a location to see if enemy troops are present, to defend a certain location, surveillance, or to attack enemy units. Now, why use patrolling instead of attacking to damage enemy units? Remember when I said that attacking damages a single unit? Patrolling will damage every unit within the patrol circle. If the enemy has five separate stacks of units and you use the attack command on one, the rest will be undamaged. However, if you patrol over all five, each one will be damaged. Now let's look at some simple numbers that prove that this is the way to go. Let's say you have a 5 stack of aircraft that does 30 damage to infantry. If you attack 1, you'll do 30 damage. But if you patrol and hit 5 infantry units, all 5, you will have technically done 150 damage. Isn't that so much better? Patrolling also has no damage penalty, so don't worry about trying to get your aircraft closer to do more damage. Even if the enemy is at, a very, is at the very edge of the patrol circle during the attack, they will receive full damage. The biggest thing to be careful about when patrolling, however, is if an enemy anti-aircraft unit is nearby and the range of the anti-aircraft unit touches the patrol circle of your aircraft, it will receive damage from that aircraft unit until it is dead. So when leaving your aircraft patrolling somewhere, put them in a safe location until they need to be used. Having them in the air is better than on the ground due to aircraft not being grounded and stuck if an airfield or the location they're based at is destroyed. This is one of the most useful things you can utilize to do better in the game. Our third tip of the day is increasing aircraft survivability. Aircraft are central to any coalition or solo player going for a win in the game. They're the fastest way to respond and eliminate an enemy threat, especially if you have conquered a large area of the world. But they're not invulnerable, and with each attack will take damage from the units that they attack. Most people stack a single type of aircraft together, for instance, five strike fighters, for example. If each strike fighter has 20 hit points, the stack in total will have 100 hit points. The downside to this is that when the stack takes 20 damage, you will end up losing a plane. And rebuilding can be expensive, and it's not ideal. To counter this, a popular way of doing so is having two different types of aircraft in the same stack. If you're using strike fighters, you may stack them with naval strike fighters or air superiority fighters. Personally, air superiority fighters work best because your stack will now be able to fight back against other enemy aircraft. But I digress. The real reason to do this is because your stack is now more survivable than before. How does this work? Let's say you stack 3 strike fighters with 20 hit points and 2 air superiority fighters with 20 hit points. You still have 100 HP just like last time, however, what makes this stack better 
is that it can now take more than 20 damage before you lose an aircraft. When the stack takes damage, the damage taken will be distributed between the different types of aircraft. This works the same way with any unit in the game. So now that your aircraft can take more damage, they can be in the fight for longer, and then return to base and recover the lost HP. Now you'll simply take less losses this way. Our fourth tip is basic. Utilize hospitals. Often seen in the capital city, experienced players will usually have a hospital if they're going for an air force or a large land army. Hospitals are an essential factor in helping you win solo or as a team. What's the reason you ask? Minimizing losses. Think of it like this. You're being invaded by a team and your air force kills a bunch of their units and takes less damage in return, or regular damage in return. You have not lost any aircraft, so all you have to do is simply fly back to the hospital before your aircraft are destroyed, wait for them to be repaired, and then repeat the process. You can't repair a unit that is already dead, so hospitals will help your units get back in the fight even after taking a beating. The faster you want a unit to heal, the higher the hospital's level needs to be. A city heals a unit by 1 HP per day at a base level. Each level of a hospital increases this by 1. A hospital has 5 levels, so add 5 to 1 and you get 6 HP per day unit in the city. Now how do you make this very fast? This HP per day is per unit in the city. So if you have 15 strike fighters that are all landed in the same city, that entire stack will heal at a whopping rate of 90 hit points per day. Crazy right? So utilize hospitals for ground and air units. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering how ships heal, they heal at a rate of 2 HP per day in shallow waters. Our fifth and final tip for today, put anti-aircraft in the center of provinces or cities you're trying to defend. Something I see many people do that is ineffective is putting anti-aircraft vehicles near cities or provinces they want to defend, but not in them. This is okay to do if you have anti-aircraft in your cities already, but let me explain why they're better in the center. Anti-air has three modes, direct defense, attack, and support attack. Direct defense is exactly what you think it is. When the anti-aircraft unit is directly attacked by an aircraft, its defense will be triggered. The direct defense never has to reload and will always be available, meaning if someone launches a thousand missiles with 3 HP at a SAM launcher with 4 missile defense, no missile will damage the SAM. They will all be shot down. Attack is the damage that an AA unit will deal within the range of the AA circle. This is a red circle in the game. Every 10 minutes, your anti-aircraft will scan for targets. And if there's a hostile aircraft or a hostile contact within the circle when the timer is over, your anti-aircraft will attack. Now. The attack is very inconsistent and there is no way to track when your AA will attack. You just have to pray that your AA crews will get off their ass and do their job before the enemy aircraft will leave the AA range. The last mode is a support attack, and this is basically a regular attack but with a twist. The AA will shoot at an aircraft that has attacked land or a unit within the range of the AA circle regardless of the scan time. There's obviously a reload with this attack, just like the regular attack, and it's 10 minutes long. But this means that having units within the range of anti-aircraft is good if not directly stacked with them. Now, why put AA in cities? Because when AA is directly attacked and ready to fire, it will attack and defend at the same time, doing double the damage it would do if it uh, only attacked or defended. This means that if a missile is launched at your city and the missile has 4 HP, if your AA has 3 missile defense and 3 missile attack, and your AA is outside the city, the missile will only take 3 damage and still hit the target. However, if the AA is in the center of your city, and missiles or and the missiles hit it, triggering the AA attack and defense, the missile will be destroyed and your city will be safe. It's always great to have at least 1-3 to three SAM launchers in your homeland cities if your enemies have missiles or aircraft. And if you know they have ballistic missiles or ICBMs, the same strategy works with theater defense systems. This will save your expensive buildings and units from being destroyed. This will conclude our first tips and tricks video. 
I hope these five pieces of valuable information prove helpful to you in all of your future games. And if you already were aware of them, great! There will be many more of these tips and tricks videos to come, but for now I will end the video here so as to not make the video too long. If you found this video helpful or just enjoyed it in general, consider liking and subscribing, and feel free to also leave a comment down below, I read them all. And a friendly reminder to check out my buddy War Always Changes. He's almost to 1000 subscribers, so help him get there. I wish you all a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Nick, over and out.